Hi everyone, I'm with Stitches XXI, I'm Starling, and today we're going to be talking about the bobbin. By the way, by the end of this video, I will be showing one of my secrets on how to get perfect tension on your bobbin, no tools needed. So you might want to stick around for that. We're going to be talking about specifically about the L-style bobbin. Wait, why is it called L-style bobbin? Because it definitely does not look like an L. I mean, these are one of those things where the name does not mean anything to identify the object. It's similar to how certain sides of paper are referred to as A4. The name itself doesn't mean anything, but it's a standard term that people on the industry understand. Enough with the political correct sentences. Now, if you master your bobbin, you can master anything within your machine. The reason? is simple. Without a bobbin, you cannot embroider your project. But say you do have a bobbin in your machine, but it does not have a good tension. I mean, listen, you will be able to embroider, but the results, I promise you, you're not going to like them. Here are the five things that I'm going to be talking and demonstrating. The first one is how to lower your bobbin into the bobbin case and then into the machine. The second one is how to clean your bobbin case. The third one is, what is the difference between plastic and magnetic? Fourth is, do I keep the bobbin case spring or throw it out the window? And the fifth is, what is a case spring anyways? All right, let's start, let's start with the basics. How to lower your bobbin into the bobbin case and then into the machine. So here I have my bobbin case and here I got my bobbin. Uh, this is a magnetic bobbin so it's simple as just putting this guy like this uh, because it's magnetic it goes the magnetic side go first and then from here I'm just going to pass it through this cut and then it comes all the way through here and then this is called the pigtail uh, in the industry they call it pigtail because it looks like a pigtail you get it Okay, anyways, uh, you do two turns, and then from there, uh, you pretty much finish. That's, uh, that's about it. Beautiful. Now, once you have your bobbin ready to go, you're going to grab it through here, and you're going to grab it like that, and then you're going to insert into the bobbin case in the machine, like so. Now, you want to make sure it doesn't move around, and it's all the way in. It's always recommended to leave a uh, two, one inch of thread so it doesn't get stuck as it's starting to embroider. Now, how to clean your bobbin case. And this one is really important because if you don't do so, you will have problem getting a perfect, you know, sewing and you don't even know where it's coming from and it can be from your bobbin. So let's get into it. All right, so these are the things that you will need to clean your bobbin case a flat screwdriver, uh, something that is thin like a business car, in this case I uh, have a sticker, and a brush. This will do it. You can use uh, compressed air if you want to do that, but for now this is what we're going to use. So in here I got my bobbin case, and we're just going to br brush it off like so. You can try to do it inside. But we're going to get deeper than this. This is your standard. This is what you should be doing, right? But now we're going to take it further. Now we're going to take a small flat head screwdriver. So now we're going to unscrew this guy over here. We're not going to unscrew it all the way, but we're going to unscrew it enough where this kind of opens up right here. You can see the gap. And then from here, you're gonna use your business card or your sticker in my in my case. And you kind of go into it. You're going in there because what will happen, things will build up in here. That can mess up with the thread that's in there. Believe it or not, this put a lot of tension as the thread comes through here. So it's very important that you clean this area very well, okay? Once you clean that area, you're pretty much good. Like this is a clean bobbin and I know I'm not going to have a problem with uh, tension. If I'm having a problem with tension, it's with something else. Now a difference between a plastic and magnetic bobbin. So what is the difference between a magnetic and a plastic bobbin? 
I mean, don't get me wrong, they both plastic, but this one is plastic on both sides and this one has a size that is magnetic. Now, the plastic on both sides has worked for years and it's still standard for many embroidery shops. And it works well with your, how the bobbin case come out of box, which is with that spring, which it help pushing the bobbin against the bobbin case. We're gonna be talking more about that later on in the video. Now, you have the magnetic. Now, with the magnetic bobbin, you should remove in the spring case. And the reason is because for this to attach to the bobbin case wall, you need to re be removing that spring that comes on the bobbin case. Now, they both do a excellent job, but I personally use only magnetic because even with the worst machine, the job of the magnetic is literally to to attach to the bobbin case and not move as it's coming to an empty life. Many shop, what they do is like as the plastic, because they're cheaper, they use plastic and then when it's almost finishing, they just like throw them out and put another one. With the magnetic, you can use it all the way to the end and you will have no problem with registration or whatsoever. I will be explaining what is the spring, the case spring for. In this case, I have a bobbin here that does not have a case spring and I have another one that does have a case spring now this bobbin it's new so if I focus here on the spring in the bobbin it's it will be really hard to tell but I will try my best here so if I push this guy down you can see how is a spring literally that's what it is it's that's the job to spring back to bounce back so when you have your where is it when you have your plastic bobbin in this case and you insert your plastic bobbin the job of that spring is to bounce back that bobbin against the wall in the machine you know when you insert this guy into the housing in the machine uh, it kind of pushes back and the reason why this is necessary for a perfect tension is so the bobbin doesn't go crazy like this as it's getting to an end, right? So it's when it insert, it's kind of have some pressure. So as in coming to an end, the bobbin will theoretically will go crazy and then you have uh, a crazy tension. Now in the other case, we have here, a bobbin case without a spring. Now, if you have magnetic bobbins, this is what you do. You remove the spring and you put the magnetic and in theory, you know, in theory, she stay, right? So the magnet is for that. The magnet is to stay put as it, as it, the bobbin is getting to an end. And this is what I use personally. Um, I seen better results and I can actually get to an end like I don't have to worry that my bobbin getting to almost an end and I'm fear that I'm gonna have uh, tensions problems um, at least that's my case now if you don't have magnetic bobbin I sh I suggest for you not to remove uh, this um, case spring now is also worth mentioning that that spring should be replaced. Um, and the reason is because say that spring is not doing its job anymore. Well, guess what? Your attention is going to, it might be off as the bobbin is getting to an end because the spring needs to be replaced. And again, since I have magnetic, I don't worry about this thing. But if you do not use magnetic bobbin, this is something that you should keep in mind. As I promised, here's how you can get perfect tension on your bobbin, always no tools needed. So this is what I do to get perfect tension. I will get my bobbin into my machine and then test the tension. And then what I see, I do the etch test or whatever letter to see the tension. And then from there, I know my bobbin tension is good. And then from there, I just, you know, gouge it and then kind of get a feeling for it. And trust me, you actually get really good at it when you know you just make it a habit. Other people, what they like to do is they kind of like hang it like that. And if it kind of rolls down, then the tension is like loose. 
and you need to just tie the tension. And I basically don't do that because most of the time the bobbin just ended up on the floor. But yeah, pretty much if it doesn't move, it's tight and you need to lose it. And if it rolls down, it's to loose, you need to tighten. But like I said, this worked really fine for me and I kind of got used to it and I have never used a tool to get the tension for my bobbin. Now, if you made it this far, maybe you should consider subscribing. I don't know, I just thought it was a good idea, you know? I'm just gonna walk away now.